Okay, what does Sephora, Christian Dior, Tiffany, Hennessy all have in common apart from the fact that I can afford them? These companies are luxury brands that are owned by the French luxury goods conglomerate Louis Vuitton, Moet Chandon and Hennessy. LVMH for short. Yes, I had to Google how to pronounce those names. So this company is one of the reasons why I love investing and I'm super excited to bring this video to you guys. Today we're talking about owning a piece of that high-end luxury market. Even if you can't afford some of the products, I mean the handbag is like 25k, you can own the shares and own that business. The world's crazy. So if you're new here, my name is Ike. The name of the channel is Live Richly, where we help each other become better investors. So you guys can do me a favor. If this video can get to 20 likes, I'll know that you're interested in these type of stock analysis videos. So take a second, hit that like button. It's totally free and it'll make my day. So if you want to learn more about LVMH and the reasons why the stock is up 83% over the past 12 months, how their CEO Bernard Arnault became the richest person in the world. Yes, more than Bezos, more than Musk. He increased his net fortune by 110 billion in about 14 months during a pandemic selling luxury goods. Also, there is room for the stock to keep going up. Stick around to learn more. As usual, this is not financial advice. Use this video as part of your research process. Okay, let's get into it. So first to understand where LVMH is going, we have to understand where they've come from. Let's look at the history and the culture of LVMH. So it was founded in 1987 when Louis Vuitton, Hennessy and Moet Chandon merged to form the luxury goods giant. So LVMH defines luxury as a combination of quality and creativity. So more on why this definition is important towards the end of the video. So they're obsessed with owning the luxury goods space and they've been on a spending spree acquiring different businesses such as paying $16 billion for Tiffany & Co last year, buying 51% of Rihanna's beauty brand, I think it's called Fenty, and 50% of Jay-Z champagne company Ace of Spades. They are fanatical about keeping a close control on the whole shopping experience such that they own the value chain of all their products. So from owning alligator farms and crocodile farms to secure their leather to training their retail employees on how to service LVMH customers. LVMH products are famous for never going on sale and it's common practice for them to destroy any unsold inventory rather than sell it at a discount. So this whole no discounting ethos has led to a sort of formal effect when it comes to LVMH products. And this was evident in the past quarter when the fashion and leather goods division grew their revenue by 52%. Louis Vuitton in particular was able to raise prices during the pandemic and demand was still up from the previous year. So now let's talk about the company structure. There are five divisions in LVMH and in total 75 businesses that fall under the LVMH banner. So there are two core divisions. The first one being fashion and leather which has such iconic brands as Louis Vuitton, Christian Dior, Givenchy, Fendi, the list goes on. The second core cool part of the business is the wine and spirits division. And this is such names as Moet and Chandon, which owns Dom Perignon, Hennessy, which in fact has a 50% market share in the global cognac market. The remaining divisions are the perfume and cosmetics division, watches and jewelry, and selective uh, retail division. I won't list all the names of the companies that are in there. There are over 75 brands in total, so feel free to pause this video. I'll put a graphic on the screen which shows you all the companies that they own. So before we talk about why I like this company, let me know if you're enjoying this video by hitting that like button. Again, we're hoping to get you 20 likes for this video. So what makes this company special? Why do I like it? LVMH has a wide moat. And this is an investing term that was popularized by Warren Buffett which essentially means they have a strong competitive advantage over their competitors. In LVMH's case, it's the biggest company in the luxury goods space, almost four times bigger than its nearest competitor. And there are a lot of economies of scale that comes with being that size. The second reason why I like this company is that it sells high quality products, which are very desirable. So these products are aspirational and will always be in demand. They've lasted the taste of time. Here's a graphic which shows you when these products were launched. 
the oldest brand in LVMH's portfolio is 656 years, dating back to the 14th century. So there, there is an intangible quality in owning something that has so much history behind it. And there are a lot of people who aspire to own these type of products as soon as they start getting that back. And then the third reason why I love it is its growth potential. This is probably one of the reasons why I'm the most bullish about it, and that's China. China makes up a third of all luxury spending, and this is projected to increase to 45% of global luxury goods spending by 2025. Looking further down the road, the demand from India and Africa is projected to be enormous as soon as these countries' economies start kicking in. And the fourth reason why I think LVMH is special is the CEO and his family own 48% of the business, which is a good sign that they will work in the best interest of the shareholders because their share interests are aligned with the shareholders. And the best companies that I've seen usually have a high level of management ownership. The fifth reason why I like LVMH is that they control their entire supply chain and the shopping experience they offer is unique to LVMH. So now let's look at the risks of investing in LVMH. The first one being their products aren't essential. So mm, during an economic downturn, their bottom line will get hit and it will get hit hard. But if you look back at what happened during the dot-com bubble, if you look at what happened after the GFC and more recently with COVID, their numbers always bounce back and they bounce back hard because after every correction, the stock market rallies. A lot of people make a lot of money and they buy a lot of expensive things. So I'll link um, their most recent quarterly report in the description below, but the fashion and leather goods division increased their sales by 52%, if I've mentioned earlier, during the pandemic. So this is, um, I, know, I know it's a risk, that economic risk, economic downturn risk, but I think that this is a very resilient company, but that's something just to be aware of if you're looking to invest in it, that this is a risk that could happen. The second thing is the valuation. LVMH shares I've mentioned are up 83% in the past 12 months. They're not necessarily cheap. I think one share now trades at like 600 and something euros. And, but then you can always buy a share of um, one of these brokers where you can, a fractional share. Uh, if you want me to make a video on fractional investing, let me know. So that's not really something that I'm concerned about. But if you're looking to buy these shares, just be aware that they're fairly expensive. And if you'd want me to do like a discounted cash flow, if you guys feel like you get value from that type of content, let me know again. Like I don't really don't do them personally when I invest because I think they're made up numbers. But if you guys would want me to do a discounted cash flow, um, hit me up. So am I investing in LVMH? Um, let me tell you a story, okay? And it's, it's gonna tie in. So in 2018, the CEO of LVMH, Bernardo No, um, gave a speech, or it was more of an interview, on, I don't remember what it was on, but he was asked a question to do with Apple products, right? And he was asked, given LVMH's definition of luxury being quality and creativity, Will Apple products fit that definition? And he shared a story of how when Steve Jobs was looking to roll out the Apple stores, something that had never existed before for tech products, they came to LVMH to see how they executed their Louis Vuitton stores. Bernard said he asked Steve a question. And the question was, in 20 years time, do you believe Apple products will be the best products in the world? Do you believe the iPhone is gonna be the best phone in the world in 20 years time? To which Steve Jobs replied, he didn't know if Apple products were gonna be the best products with the way technology works. But Bernard told him that he can say with absolute certainty that in 20 years time, Dom Perignon Champagne will still be the best champagne in the world because it has been the best champagne in the world for the past 300 years. And there's something to that. There's something to how the product they've made have been the best products in pretty much every category in the world for as long as they've existed. And these products have existed for hundreds of years. So let me know what you guys think of these direct stock type of videos. I'm trying to not go too deep with the numbers, but keeping it informative as well. But let me know if you guys want me to give you those financials because I can give them to you. Um, I hope you guys found this video helpful with your research. Or maybe you had never heard of LVMH before and you're now looking at this company different. Or maybe you've looked at their products 
and now you realize you can actually own the shares instead of spending X amount of money on, I don't know, champagne or whatever. Um, I'll also link some videos on other investments that I've done. Feel free to give those a watch. Let me know what you think of them as well. As always, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Don't forget to share my video and subscribe. Okay, I'm out. Bye.